Good morning and greetings everywhere. This is Pastor Tavo, one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, an apostle with a lowercase servant leader A, similar to a Paul in Galatians 1, went into the off-scouring of the world kind of apostle. That's the kind of apostle we understand and we agree with. So we're pro the many kinds of ministries, but we also want to pray protection for you, but also teach you for your own salvation. The main thing is this ministry has not been exactly spared from what goes on when one just wants to show up as a leader that is not recognized, that is not famous, that is not uh, you know, surrounded with all the paraphernalia people and uh, bodyguards of the day. And this is where I believe the Lord needs this correction, this exhortation, this admonishment, this Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that God's word is profitable. It's profitable for loving and respectful. And this is it, teaching, but it's instruction, instruction doctrine, reproof, and correction so that the human of God will be thoroughly furnished. And I don't know about you, but I'm not thoroughly furnished, and you're not thoroughly furnished in the way you think you should be, probably, but we're going to teach them there. On the other rumble, which we have, uh, this is this is really going to be on basically rumble.com, Apostle Tavo, lowercase letters. Then it's going to be the other one, which is going to have the series, a long series about the teaching of money, which is big time, from the 80s on, you know, in Christian ministry. And then we, it's things we've stumbled upon. And uh, stumbling upon it, and we're putting it on Rumble and YouTube as well, different places, Tavo.leader, which I also have a lot of teaching on that as well. We're doing it for the sake of the Christian. Anyone who's not a Christian, you're welcome, you're respected and valued. But you got to know, are we saved? Are we really going to make it to the throne by ourselves? And have God say, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm talking to me. So I'm going to teach today at the leading of the Lord with respect to hear those who have an ear to hear. And you can see we represent the dress down look of the day. We're dressed down the people who are like not self-important, but we're important to the Lord more. And that's all we want to think about. Who's important? Who do we value? Who do we really treasure? It's the Lord. By grace are we saved. I believe that the Lord has sent me... <clears throat> To peruse the body since 1976 is the call, age 24, to know the doctrines, to know the spheres of influence. But the thing is, I don't think he, I was ever prepared to think as a prophet type, a tiny prophet with a call, you no know, name, that I'd be representing the many like that, that are out here that were driven away, biased away, attacked away, undermined and targeted uh, with false authority and that's what we're going to teach on today is you don't want to make sure you want to make sure you know your doctrine yeah that you're the bride of Christ but there's two parts of discerning false good and evil wheat from tares self-righteous from righteous and that would be not just doctrine the teaching of the New Testament minus the law but it would be the teaching of authority Wow, who would have thought authority, subliminal, overt, covert, and I've written, uh, even asked chat, GPT, AI, some series on Tavo Leader that I'm writing up, the minuscule, fine-tuning, fine points of what is real authority, because that is a big one, let's get to that, because if you don't know your doctrine, and you don't know about authority, the different kinds, <clears throat> you're not aware, you could be in jail, you could pay a price. You could be among the quote, and I'm not teaching it, I don't have time, the strange children. And I'd say most of these, the ones I've experienced, happen to be in the charismatic movement, charis prophetic, charismatic prophetic movement. So we're pro them. Anybody could have it, but we're just saying we're. this is reform. Reform to spare God's people, his holy name in them. All right. When I... <clears throat> When I study, get a word of the Lord, I have to live it. I've had to go through it, get pure, you know, I'm, no one's perfect. I'm not only Christ was a hundred percent and 200 percent perfect hero, doctrine, character, caliber, a, hey. and also we show up as is as on a given day to represent the normal people, <laughs> frankly, you don't want to have to put on their f show just to go to your fellowship. All right. So when I was growing up, <clears throat> 
When I was growing up, my father, the pastor, the Baptist pastor, is up with the Lord. I never thought about him being, I knew he was my daddy. I never thought about him being the pastor. He wasn't a fundamentalist. He was humorous. He was like the same person on the stage or the pulpit and life and real life at home. And that's what I want to model is just being yourself, being real. Uh, whether you like it or not, whether this is your a Pentecostal or not, I'm not, quote, any of the kind we are teaching it. The Lord's giving me a revelation <clears throat> of teaching cross-body unity, which means you have to know your turf, <clears throat> where your turf ends and where the others begin for Ephesians for unity. But we understand the need to have your doctrine <clears throat> not be compromised, not be slave owned by. And that's why we're out of that system and we're so really one of the reasons I celebrate this peace. Wow, I celebrate it. I didn't know that I was in a prison house of psychic, subliminal, occult, witchcraft, false authority, and good people. It's by no training, <clears throat> zero example, I guess, just passed down tradition and wannabeism. That's the big one. All right. But I do honor and give God glory and honor these people that have worked hard and slaved for all of us, black, white, and brown, that are out there. And maybe through the years they didn't know, they've developed and morphed into cults and psychic and occult, false authority. And that's what we got to tell people. Let them know in case. All right. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that I'll be honest, I was raised around very healthy and <laughs> natural family like you go out to I call it the barista fellowship you know we go to the coffee shop and they are like hi how are you it's I believe that's funny it's like the cheers of the day you know the old bar chills everybody knows your name they may not know you real well <clears throat> they may call me Miss T or something like that but hey it's a spiritual realm it's a climate that is very effective <clears throat> it's timely it's respectful and it's diverse and you can go in there and, you know, you don't have to buy anything, but, you know, you, you should. I tried to. All right. But you go there and you think, ah, oh, I don't have to be on duty. I'm not in the, out there we're reading my mind. Now they might. People are doing that, but I don't feel it. I will in the church. <laughs> False dysfunction. I will feel that. Otherwise, like, everybody's cheery. They're all equal. I like that. I just want to be, you know, it's a, in fact, I just didn't frankly understand why I felt the need starting in Dallas <clears throat> to um, go there. One reason I was in discovering the prison house of systems, religious systems, and it is not me. So I was just tired of disrespect. I was just tired of feeling lonely when you're supposed to be going to a fellowship of ministers. I was just tired of feeling what in the world set apart. So like a Paul, <clears throat> Like a John, a Jane on the Isle of Plano, as it were, and it wasn't just Plano. You just pull apart like you know your scriptures, and you know the Lord before you move down there. And you knew good people and great people, greater than yourself. And you just go there, all right, this is me coming apart to hear God, to be broken, to be restored. <clears throat> like a Jane or a John had they go away to their isle <clears throat> of imprisonment to hear from the Lord themselves. You know, Paul is one of my mentors. <laughs> from that time... Dad for calm pastoring, Paul for really being different and shocking the new move because they couldn't get him. They didn't discern Paul. Let me tell you why. Excuse this. <clears throat> Whatever's in the atmosphere. It's something in this, you know, but in there an atmosphere anywhere. Yes. All right. <laughs> God is so good. He's bigger. <clears throat> so when you go to the Lord, you understand doctrine, you got to read the Bible for yourself. You don't just visit, you don't just sit there, you just don't listen on media or YouTube. You go to hear God for yourself, and that's what this is <clears throat> in me. <clears throat> so I think there a lot of the things I discovered was people just don't know basic scriptures of community. It's about turf, self, misunderstanding, uh, you know, all these things. So I believe it's a lot of failing to discern the body of Christ correctly. They can't, you know, like I'm peaceable. What in the world is this? So I realize a lot of people are like racists that they are triggered by type before. Of course, that drove me to the Lord. <laughs> and it also is a prophet, apostle, not a junior minister. They can't tell them Elijah from a false prophet or a woman Jezebel or witch sitting in their audience. That's what I found repeat charismatic. 
So we are um, not careless, but what all this did was remind me of how great the Baptists, the black people, many of them, <clears throat> the dom domination, but really myself and my family and all the people I would hang with and run with are. And I would just, now I've gotten it down and I'm concerned about people not making it to heaven because of false authority. Matthew 7, 23. Let me get to that in a minute. 21, 23. But I'm also teaching. So the next group, because there's going to be a shaking. There is a shaking. And you want to survive. You don't want to be, uh, not have a, min a call like Eli Temple I Priesthood, like um, Vanity, Isaiah <clears throat> 1 through 10, the leaders of God's people. These are all given to me down there before I came, and it's still now going on. Isaiah 1 through 3 said why God's people were blocking the move of God in Isaiah 10, 27, the yoke-breaking anointing that would make their necks so fat that no fierce Assyrian nation could take them over and wipe out their culture. We're right there, all right? The, the, the little g gods were the first one, and the God's leaders, not the other. They were the, um, the false religion in God's people, not the other kinds of faith. It was the vanity, the choice to have vanity in God's people, including the women, that were causing this nation of God's leaders. God's leaders, God's people nation, not the foreign nations, all colors of black, white, and brown. I will say that now. To be Isaiah 5. 20, which was collectively having a giant influence, you know, a, a negative influence on the whole nation, the culture. It was an Isaiah 520, which was woe. God said, it's a woe. You are calling things that are good evil. You're approving of things that are evil. That's good. And you are <clears throat> doing things, calling people good, evil that are good. And this, I'm an example. I am an example. Whatever this type was needed, okay, whatever this person that represented, I guess, many or God, they cannot tell a woman leader. And I never thought about being a woman. I've always been a human's minister. I don't even care. I just think, you know, chain of command, order, head of home. Yeah, let's do it. Doesn't bother me. I never knew that was so big, huge. It's dysfunctional. And then that triggers minimalizing false authority disgusting bias chasing like looking for a chink in your armor Ew, it's false a little stuff i now call that thinking crapology not in the not in the style of christ all right but we found it over and over that's what i'm teaching all right so in the teaching we want to get out later just one through ten of Isaiah, and that is a word, a national word for now, before it's too late, you know. God forbid it won't, but I'm just letting you know that was the word. The other one was Obadiah, down there. Obadiah, the warning to God's people in the priesthood that the false, pre the hireling priesthood of Edomites was infiltrating God's real people, and that's what we got. So I did some tracing of that. Do you realize that the la the national day of the, the last word in the Old Testament is to the priests? It says, you say you're my messengers. Well, I saw one of you in chapter 2. One of you priests was crying out for more when I saw the wife of your youth that you had divorced after violence. She was weeping here an hour before. You say you're my messenger. It's money. All right, yeah, we got the tithe thing in there. We're going for this. All right, closing out, God says, and he warns the priesthood. This is my opinion now. I'm submitting it as Selah, you know, Selah. God says to his people through the prophet Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, he said, um, you say you're my messengers, priests, but I'm going to send my messenger and he's going to fill the temple. All right, and then my opinion the 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament began. And then after that, it was 10 generations with no big word, no Bible canon. They had the Apocrypha, but that's not Bible canon. So there was no word of the Lord. And I've never heard this. I'm just telling that this is what I'm submitting is my thought. Because what got spewed out in the culture of God's people the Hebrew temple that needed to be cleansed was the hireling priesthood of the Pharisees. Even Herod, someone wrote, was a was a Edomite. 
and the Edomite in the priesthood sound, you know, was a big deal. Not just the Aaronic, Zerubbabel, true priesthood, the remnant, like John the Baptist's father, the priest, Zacharias, I believe his name, he was a remnant. So there always is a remnant. All right, well, so we look at the Old Testament, my, my submitted opinion in theology. We see there was no Bible canon for 40, uh, 10 generations of priests, God's people. It is my opinion that God was letting them fester and stir and think about it and whatever, relate to God or relate to whatever they wanted and make up their choice who they're going to serve in God's people. So they come out on the other side in Matthew when Jesus Christ comes and then we take it from there. He's always <clears throat> intruded upon, interrupted uh, by people with false, dirty consciences, the controlling system of his people. A lot of people would say through the years, we've heard this, we understand, oh, you know, the Jews killed Jesus. No, it was the system that killed Jesus, just like the system tried to kill this person, this minister, you know, the apostolic side of this. So we can teach. Now, let me, t so you got to take up your cross to do this. You got to take up your cross to do anything if you're really serving God servant leadership. So we can't go into that, but I will relate it to Paul, what I mentioned to you earlier. So you can't go apart if you're just an attender. You don't want to go to part. You just want to take notes. You want to do all the, read the Bible. You want to read the, um, go to church. You want to read all the books by the famous prophets that you, and that's what they do. That's what they do. But right now that ain't going to make it. That ain't going to happen. It's a culture of it. It's frozen over. It's made its choices, <clears throat> it's indifferent, it thinks it's a king, the king of ministry, the king of Christendom, the king, because we've been there, we've seen it all, and that's the tough, the tough, whatever, illegitimate church, the Ishmael, that is the illegitimate church, which is operating under its own legalism, neo-Phariseeism, and a lot of it is poor me, nouveau riche, people who are used to be poor, used to be dysfunctional and you know they couldn't help it but now they know how to make money with God and they are now the king which is the opposite of the Christ at this hour you need to think compassion so we are pro them I really am but we're shaking it up because it's not just false opinions false mind fit it's fantasy but it's also <clears throat> not scriptural and it uses false authority. That's the part. So when I didn't know this and I was studying, sent to study the body of Christ, the speaking in tongues, the not, they would all be born again, believe the Bible. They say black, white, humans, males and females. I never knew this. I didn't know about this. I didn't know about dysfunction. It wasn't there as much, I don't think. And it was not deception, believing it was the only way, you know, it was the only way, the truth and the life. It was also more servant leader and nobody's perfect. But listen, there is a huge stronghold in this that teaches all these subculture of people that are mesmerized, mesmerized by it. And a lot of these people, from what I've seen, are not going to make it unless the Lord, they hear God for themselves. All right. One thing I do not do is put word curses on people like these. I do not. I do not pray against. I do not speak against. I have not reviled them in private or in public. I do not name their names. I could. I'd rather love them and have an Isaiah 118 come let us reason together and let them hear for themselves. We don't have to know everybody. The issue is there is so much more this ministry knows than meets the eye. So I'm going to be teaching on TevoLeader.com. A lot of the AI series about authority, other words of the Lord. And then we're going to also teach on our two Rumble channels. One is the uh, basic exhorting like this, is, which is on this one, uh, Apostle Tavo. And then the other Rumble is the more teaching of money along series and more basic theology for a school. And it would one chapter at a time. And that would be on Apostle. Uh, let's see, it would be rumble.com slash unity teammate you teammate use our our official title all right so we're going to go on from there the thing that i don't want to say is i don't want to hurt anybody i really don't want to hurt anybody i'm trying to really submit it uh to the office ministers and i'm submitting to the what they now see this is it you know and if you're 
you know people can call themselves a prophet. Everybody. You can know they call themselves the apostle, the pastor, the choice special, the bishop, the teacher. You know that. We do. And we're trying to really be careful with that. But we're not going to deny it. We are that. But here's how we mean it. If you have no clue, if you don't want to know, that's fine. But I'm going to let you know how I will say this, not meaning what they you think it might mean. All right. We are going to say the word prophet, which is an official call. You know, in the Bible, let all of you prophesy. I'm not trying to be make a prophet or anything. But we're calling, because this is one, an office prophet, senior office prophet. Doesn't have to be famous. All right, we're saying it's like Paul would write when he said he was an apostle. Galatians 1, 1 and 2, which is this. So the word apostle and prophet are lowercase letters, even bishop. Every word of office in the ministry is always written by Paul. The senior capital, I would call him in the first 12 capital A, right? He wrote it as himself. Would he think of it? Oh, we're just out here collaborating with the Lord and, you know, we just have a call, but we're not better. Uh, we have an authority, so be respectful. But um, Paul said, I'm an off scouring of the world, the dung to the world. And I am. This is, and we're grateful. We're just happy. All right. So the word apostle and prophet, the word prophet is not P, capital P, the prophet. Because we need you to hear. I will say it like this, though. If we look at the titled, ensconced theology of this kind of group, Levitical patriarch usually, not a patriarch, that's an anchor person, but a Levitical, you know, the doctrine and the control and the style. God bless, you know. Then we're going to say <clears throat> we're not of the LP, but we're pro the human. Jesus was not the Levitical patriarch. He was the servant leader. And so is this. Paul was a Levitical patriarch of the Hebrew. Hebrew, he was a help, H-E-L-P, Levitical patriarch. But when he got, that was when he was Saul. That's the flavor. That's the fruit. All right. This is what jacks him up. All right. <laughs> so when he got saved, he was really relieved of the legalism, the word curse theology. He became Paul. Hallelujah. Now, let me get to Paul a minute. I relate to this. All right. So Paul went after he got saved. He used to have been a former LP, you know, Torah thumper. After God's new move, which is the sign of, a Levitic, of the false theology, the old move will go after the ensconced Pharisees of the old move will go on and try to take out the new move because they're suspicious, rivalry, uncomfortable, don't recognize it. All right, it has to be revealed. All right. So when Paul got saved miraculously, he was ready. I, now I see it. I want to go and help the church, the future church, the Christians that are in there. You know, the 12 apostles handpicked and mentored by Christ. This is where you get down to what we know. <laughs> so Paul, Christ had gone. He left the 12 apostles in charge. Take out Judas. Put in Matthias, let's say. And they were all working in the uh, employed not table waiters like this is not a table waiter, though I have, and I would, but I need to do this. All right. That kind of apostle, a training teaching apostle. All right. So um, when Jesus Christ left and he left his mentored, handpicked choices who were really uneducated persons, and I love to say this on behalf of all of us, <clears throat> it was stated by the apostles mainly, I think it was Paul, Peter and Barnabas, I think it said that the the good news of the gospel was first given to ignorant and untrained men. The first church gospel, good news, was first entrusted to ignorant and untrained men. And I think that's right. We're all like that. However, I would add at this point, God didn't intend us or them to stay that way. And they did not. So we must grow. We must work on this theology, this portrayal, you know, dysfunction. All right. So Paul was not wanted. He went over there to offer to help. And, you know, many people in submission groups would say, you know, who is he under? Who are you under? And all that type of thing. You know, it's just a sidetrack from theology, you know, but we're letting, it's gotten its own life on it. <laughs> so Paul went over and he wanted to help and he was earnest. He had no secret agenda like this. And yet he was stared down. He was like, he met with Bar uh, Paul 
Peter and Barnabas for two weeks, it didn't go well because they didn't get him. They didn't want him. So Paul said, uh, I didn't need their permission. I did not, I did not confer with flesh and blood. He knew the Lord, the Holy Ghost. So the Lord said, go to Arabia, which is Damascus, which is Syria, which is all Gentile. And here he was this Jew steeped and one of the best teachers in all the Torah, handpicked and mentored by Gamaliel, if I pronounce it correctly. And he was not wanted because they failed to discern the body of Christ correctly. And that's just like now. They maybe they, I'm not saying putting that to accuse them, but I'm looking at what goes on right now by former moves. Maybe they gotten papal. Oh yeah, Paul was not handpicked and mentored by Christ. We sat with him three years. That's how it is. All right, trading on. I don't say they did it, but this is the what comes to mind. So Paul was not sent. He was sent, but he wasn't wanted. He was rejected. So he went up for 14 years, 13 years, up to be with the Arabs. Here's why. When you are raised a certain way, it's in your pores. It's in your DNA almost. Good, bad, or ugly. Psychic or prophetic. One or the other. All right. So you can have things in there that even though you're saved and renewed that you want the Lord, only the Lord, you're not biased, you have still things in your heart or your you know, your DNA, your hard drive that will come out. And that's what I found myself. You know, I had to be milled and sifted like, you know, different things. You want to do right, but you're not perfect. And God knows your humanity, you know, pride and all these things. And I'm not saying I'm for that on everybody, but I'm understanding my opinion of Paul. So Paul was steeped in all only Jews all his life in the first church were only Jews all their life. Basically, Jesus was Jewish. He was sent to the Jews, but it wasn't the common people that killed him. It was the system. But Paul was called to be another realm, another exponential factor in the church itself that is now two-thirds of the Bible and he wanted community not turf he wanted community of good authority males and females he wanted all these things Baptists and non-Baptists all right so I teach from this perspective of you know understanding that accuser toward a new move accuser a bias I mean, it's awful to what they do to people. And if I represent multicultural diversity because of my DNA, my assignment, which I do, then I also am a proven person. I've had really great theological background before I got my own call from many family good teaching, but I'm a, squ a, a, a Noborean type. So we've watched ourselves as a person who happens to be put in this ministry as a female never think thought like that but I realized oh it triggers certain things it triggers oh suspicion it triggers dogma it triggers accusation it triggers like uh, manipulating you to false control praying against you reading you without ever speaking oh yeah it's like having racism oh it's a culture it is so this is why we can train from that so Paul was sent not because he wanted to be sent, but he had to be, you know, God needed him. Let me say why I believe Paul was sent. Paul had been raised in the culture where everything was right. Everything was right because I'm in the law. I know the law. I know when you're out of the law. I know I'm per you know, you can be by mistake perfect or think you are, you know, or react that you're perfectionist spirit. I had been raised in a culture, not my parents, but just in the culture of, you're expected to achieve, you're expected to do, and I was a good student, all these things, and nothing against that, but it's different when you know the Lord, it's different, you have better peace, you have more like, wow, you draw the line, oh my gosh, it's got to be about him, not me, and that's the cool part, really is, all right, so Paul had been raised very disciplined, very educated, educated, and so when he went up to be out of his element, out of the Torah crowd, he was like, wow, because he'd been, he was used to being with the Jews only, my opinion. Barely any Christians there at the time. All the different cultures were there, Africa and Asia, Greek, Roman, he was around that. So then he goes and he's sent and commissioned to go apart from that to get something from the Lord. He didn't know why, but he was sent to the Arabs. He went up there, in my opinion... I submit that that is where Paul got sanded with culture. He got divorced. He got, 
he got aware of the ins and outs, the nuances of a new culture of valuable people. And when he comes back, he doesn't write against anything about Arabs or, the, or people who weren't Jews. He was not against the um, he was not against the Gentiles at all. He came back with love. He saw them as humans because they saw he had to interact and live about them with God, and he had only God. So he went into the Lord more, praying, fasting, and got after God's heart. And he comes back to the first church with what is called the abundance of the revelation. How did Paul and this minister, how did Paul get the abundance of his revelations that gave him what he got, what we know him for? It says in Ephesians 1.17, Paul writes for all of us in Ephesians. He says, I pray that all of you will have more of God's spirit of wisdom and revelation in your knowledge of him. Wow, your knowledge of him. That means uh, hanging around with him, not just being taught, I'm reading a book, I gotta go to church, I gotta get good teaching. That's about him. You gotta know God as he sands you, sifts you, and also just hanging out and having fun with God. He's lovable and who he is, he wants to communicate in a relationship, not a tyranny, not a dominator, not a scolding you know, father type. No, no, he wants you to hear him and he'll ease you into it. All right. So Paul was there on our behalf to understand when you're not in the typical realm of being a quote minister to those that are so quote typical <laughs> they've got it down and we are pro the people who are taught everybody's got a different point of view but we're telling you our point of view that is needed now with the people who don't want to go to church who are scared you should hear online alone the weirdness the scolding the deconstruction the come you know going against the christian against christian TMZ tabloids. Oh my gosh. How would you know? Why do I want to go to those kind of Christians? Why do I want to go those throw the book, Bible thumping, beat down or disrespecting or evil conscious Pharisees and then anti everybody? Anti woman. Listen, they could be anti woman. That has never been my father. I do not care. They can have their choice. I have read for the people that are bothered by it, that have never been loved by anybody, and they've been chased down and criticized and accused by these Christians. You can do your thing, but I'm going to go to God and teach the right, you know, teach different. So it's not about the book. It is about the book to, you know, bait, but it's about the heart and the book, the heart of God, the creator and the book. It will teach authority because of authoritarianism. It's authoritarianism and non-contrite tribalism, territorial turf protecting and totalitarianism for money, in my opinion. That is the root of the all the ministry platitudes and the descent of America. Okay. When we look at all that goes on, we don't look at now, really, we look at the last day. We look at the last day and we say, now who's going to be there on the final day? Will you, will I, will they? What's more important, your stuff or the people who will never see God or want to know him forever? This is our point with Cross Buddy. Our only point has been there and I can never tell you what I triggered just for showing up with dysfunctional Christianity in these certain kinds of ministries. The tribe effect. <laughs> so we're going to teach on celebrity at one point. Hey, there is no, we, we're not, we're not a celebrity. This is, you can have renown. God can give you a gift that will make you renowned. That in the scripture, Jesus had renown, but he wasn't a celebrity. Paul was renowned, but he was an off scouring, but he had renown. So you can be who you want to be, but we're not going to have this bowing and scraping hierarchy form of people pleasing that's out there now and there. And it's authority. That's authority. False authority. All right. But mistaken authority. I'm not going to put any curses on, you know, word curse or speak evil. Nobody knew. Now we can teach. All right. So if I go back, I can go back way long before all this kind of teaching and all this kind of people pleasing and all this kind of uh, potentate display and prophesying capital P prophets. I want to say this, we're just out of that and we are not missing it, but we love the people, we respect them. We did grow in a lot of ways. 
but I have to be so careful now because I trigger their people. Their people are cults. <laughs> their people will just read me. I will feel, feel it. If somebody scans me, you know, like I sit there in James 3.17, I try to teach that now as defense for you and for reading people. All right, James 3.17 says that any wisdom from above is going to be, first of all, on display or not, is going to be pure, peaceable, easily, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy, and I'm all that. Never have not been on purpose, 250, 300% of 50% sin of the time yet this gets attacked that got attacked which made me read it back and say all right i'm gonna st god said if you see the same thing three times or more in different places and you just for showing up and it hurts people or my good name my safe name that is my sign i see a lot of it and you're called to teach on it and that's all i'm doing all right you do not know who is watching you and who's been through H in their life. You have no clue. You are, one thing this has been, I put it out there, this has not been surrounded and been in famous isolation, buffered from reality at the grassroots. No, this is put out there with them. Long suffering and not calm. But because of the accuser of the sister and the mother and the accuser in Christian ministry, they have no clue about real life anymore. All right. God could take it. I don't want this to happen because that would mean bad. God could take it all down. There's nothing. He could take it all down. And then you're going to have to know this. You'll have to know it. Like real people. Like most people do. Real people. All right. So this is the issue. You can grow up too much and do too super. Where'd my, my uh, reading enhancers go? I don't know what I did with them. Anyway. The issue is that I'm going to get out red letter chapters. Let's see, did I finish Paul? All right, so there was Jesus Christ in his red letters, in his actions, and his love, and his portrayal of Christian leadership and ministry that you can read and you should to figure out some of this, a lot of it, and how he acted with his mother. And you read, here's what you do this is cross body unity, abiding relationship theology, art. Abiding relationship theology deep inside each human heart is art. So you'll understand it. There's a person inside that is relatable or not. And they could be wonderful, nice, trustworthy, peaceful. Or they could be have an art, art, you know, that could be dominating, sneaky, sly, targeting, all these things. Deep inside each human heart is art. My art, your art. We've got to watch our art, everybody. All right. So we look at Christ's art. It says in Acts 10, 38, the prophet went about doing good, healing all those who were uh, uh, depressed. The prophet uh, Isaiah, excuse me, Acts 10, 38, Jesus Christ went about doing good, healing those who were oppressed by the devil. And the Lord was with him. Who oppresses, who distresses, who dogmatizes, who blocks and withstands and accuses. It ain't Jesus. It's the devil. All right. Now let's look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. And it would be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Jesus was alive in ministry and leadership with his mother Mary, his family, the real people. And you read it again. Nation, you read it again. How In every relationship, you just look at the relationships, how Jesus acted and reacted in every one. And you act the same will be fine. Jesus acted and reacted in every one. That's the basic of relationship theology and a cross by the unity. Also, I'm going to close because I've got to teach the next part. I didn't get to Matthew uh, 7, a big, long red letter chapter, which I will. There'll be a part two. But I didn't come across anything that would make me think that people are not able to repent. I've not really come across anything white, black, or brown, men or women that you cannot repent from, okay? I feel like God is giving you this last, you know, a really last chance. So there can be true and false doctrine together, but then it was the the boys' club, the humans' club, that are chasing, I think, the ministry, chasing the ministry prize that are the false authority. 
And it was not until the last couple of years that I realized, wow, I must, I must have, that is giant. When you're assessing and accusing or evaluating who is true and who is false as a prophet, pastor, male, female, leader, parent, authority. Wow, it's not just the verbiage. It's not the singing. It's not just the teaching that can be false or not. It can be the authority. And that is the giant one that I that brings me to mind. And I got to say it because I got to teach it though better, you know. Do you realize that you can be saved in ministry and out on the field and go through rough times and think you've made it to heaven on the last day, eternity, and God will say, no, you didn't get, make it. You're not getting in. Do you realize that? Matthew 7, 23, 21 through 23. Jesus tells the book of Acts ministers specifically that move in prophecy, delivering devils, and signs and wonders. That could mean anybody. I'm not giving anybody, a, you know. But this is giant specifically to this more subjective culture of all of us, right? And he warns them, even though they would be called, what, famous, not famous, missionaries, evangelists, out on the field, delivering all these people, falling out, you know, all these things. The more spiritual side, supernatural side of God. It says, many of you, this is Jesus' words, I'm going to teach this in a context in a moment. Many of you would say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't all these people get help? Didn't I do wonder working power in your name, Lord? Didn't I cast out devils to those who were oppressed and feeling so bad? And the Lord will say, out from me, depart from me forever. You who, ne who work lawlessness. So it can be translated iniquity, I believe in the King James, or lawlessness. Lawlessness? What? We're born, we're saved. We're sent to do that. If you look at Bibles, Strong's Bible Concordance, it translates the words into you who use false authority. Whoa. Big shot. Mesmerizing. Persona. We're accustomed to it. We just put the pressure on because we know how to work it. Whoa. You mean offerings? We're going to sit here and hold you till you cough up the money. Okay. Oh, uh... Eli Temple I priesthood, two different forms of this, and they were wiped out. First Samuel, oh, mesmerizing, charming the women, eh, as they come to sleep with them, abusing their character to get what they want, the women, all right, it could be men or kids now, I mean, just using false authority, that was... Oh no, they're victims. Oh no, you know, it's because daddy didn't raise us right. No, it's your choice. The other one would be the discipline of money, which is the love of money is the root of all evil, but it's the relationships. These are relationships. The women at the temple, the money at the whatever, at the ministry. It's relationship. Past this, you know, all the usual teaching, we're saying it's relationship and how do you respect people? How do you respect God? The Most High Jehovah God. Fear of the Lord. All right. So we look at 1 Samuel as a giant, giant teaching factor. For the, you know, this was a status quo, big ministry. The people knew all about them. They were well known. They were renowned in the area. They were the Hebrew temple with Eli the top gun, the father, and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, who were his associate ministers. And they were stable because people brought offerings. The women always came. And it said God's people, the leaders, the totalitarian leaders, used the women that came to the door repeatedly. And Eli did nothing. He never spoke up. That sounds like Levitical patriarchy in its worst. It said that God's skilled and gifted and strong-minded Ministers, Hophni and Phinehas, were renowned in the area, and that the offering of the Lord was despised in God's day, which it is right now, because of the unfaith of the way that God's people used false authority to take the money. It said they put pressure on the people for their offerings, which were back then not really cash, but it was more like uh, the fat, 
of the of the sacrifices and they kept it for themselves they could have even employed you somebody else to put pressure on the people to get it in whoa so eli was like benign eli was indifferent eli was caught up in it you know or tired scared of being controlled not being popular with his sons you know a lot of things go into play so because eli did nothing and he was the chain of command over the boys club boys will be boys that's the lp Oh, you know, boys will be boys. A double standard. Double standard Christian ministry and leader. No. This person has said a long time. There is no more double standard in Christian ministry. Tell your people. Tell your teenagers. Tell yourself. All right. Same with girls will be girls. No, no, no. All right. So with this going on, there was a giant big, huge need for God's people to see that God means business. So out of the woodwork, here are these famous, gifted, talented, achieved people, Solomons of their day in their own ministry, working the false authority, Dan, you know, dysfunctional. It says in 1 Samuel that out of nowhere comes a no-name prophet, but a national prophet. No name, no face, faceless and nameless ministry like I heard prophesied in the 80s. That would be the final revival, which is fine. God's face, not ours. So out of nowhere, this no-name prophet comes and he gives the word of the Lord to Eli, the head person, the head one. And he says, you are out of here. God has written, Ichabod, his, his glory has departed and you will no longer be here, neither any of your sons, your skilled ministry sons, your patriarchal ministry sons, they'll be gone. And that happened. Later, the two sons were killed, Hophni and Phinehas, and Eli heard it, and he broke over, he was overweight. I think he was 98, and he fell over backwards, broke his neck, and nobody ever sat in that priestly temple again. Well, guess who came up? Hannah had been there, and we see Hannah, the lone woman without a man beside her, is a very typical accuser point of dysfunction. When Hannah came up in 1 Samuel, Eli was sitting in his break, and he'd seen it all, done it all. He was an accomplished older minister. So he sees what is very typically the Eli Temple priesthood reaction in modern day when they're toxic and caustic and misogynist, accuser of women. So when Hannah comes. She has a backstory like every person, every woman, every man does, alone or with many people. So she's alone as a test, my opinion. Hannah comes up, and her backstory is she's the favored wife of two. Elkanah loves her more than the other one, Penina. Now, Penina has children. Hannah is barren. She has no proof that she's a mom. She has no proof. But she's grieving because she's getting relentless persecution. She's suffering, and yet her husband loves her. It is, he loves her, and so she goes to the temple to pour her heart out before the Lord, not knowing that it is a dysfunctional priesthood controlling the turf. All right. <laughs> so she goes up crying and weeping, and, and old Eli's sitting there on his break, and he sees this woman, the lone woman, which is very, very symbolic. The lone woman shows up and she's, you know, grieving and her shoulders are shaking or something. She's emoting. <laughs> so that triggers the spirit on and in the priesthood, the minister. What does he say? What's the first thing that Eli says or thinks when that lone woman shaking and grieving comes? Is he moved with compassion? Oh, I wonder what's wrong. Let me go help her, which is God. Or is it fault finding? My Bible teaches me ministry minister in some in the Bible it says the heart the mouth speaks what the heart is full of so we can gauge and assess not accuse Eli we can assess and evaluate what was in his heart about a female a lone woman or you know in ministry by how he first said to himself when he first sees Hannah the lone woman on the front porch of the Eli Temple I priesthood and he's like in a hurry, doesn't want to be bothered, he needs time alone. The first thing he thinks is, oh, she's drunk, accusing, not compassion. Oh, I hope she's all right, which is God. 
and say, says, oh, she's drunk. My problem. I've seen it all before. Probably time-wasting, dysfunctional, got baggage. That's what they do. This is what we know, discovered. So then God has displayed reasons, real reasons for this kind, this style of charming, dysfunctional, toxic, mammon-centric, anti-woman, or just, you know, not respect, no holy fear of the Lord, priesthood to be removed. And it is. However, who in the world do you think that Hannah turned out to be? Because after he accused her at first, Eli did prophesy over Hannah. And Hannah later did give birth, and the child was born named Samuel, who was the first prophet in the nation of Israel. Wow, got to know our Bible here, and know your turf, and know your, you know, you got to think big. All right. So with that said, I'm going to close this out. Let me see if I did it well. Did we teach Paul and his relationship to the first church, and he suffered. He was not first invited to be in the clique. He was sent, but he wasn't accepted, which is part of it. He did get milled and sifted, yet he ended up with two-thirds of the Bible that he wrote at the inspiration of the Lord, not because he was so great, not because he was so gifted, because God wanted him to. He was obedient, and that's all you need to be right now is obedient. We honor Christ as the mega voice of the culture, and we honor Christ today, the leader, George, uh, leader, um, Jesus Christ, who is not a Levitical patriarch, Bible thumper. He wasn't a screaming, finger pointing, you're going to die, and all these people that are out there online. Oh my gosh, so many never, word cursed. He was not under the law. He fulfilled the law. So we want to really teach Bible. We want to teach New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as the example of Christ, who was the prophet, who went about doing good in acts, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, and he was not a wuss, but he didn't revile, and the time he corrected people and went after them is the second part of this, is the Pharisees at least three times. The Pharisees of his own father's temple, the Hebrew temple. God is good. His mercy endures forever toward all of us. Say amen. Bye-bye.